Welcome to the presentation of the paper Squirrel Crawling RDF Knowledge Graphs on the Web. My name is Michael Röder and I am working in the DICE Research Group at Paderborn University. I'm going to give you an overview of Squirrel, our crawler for the data web. But uh, first of all, let's talk about why we even need crawling at all. So there are a lot of nice applications like uh, search, question answering, intelligent assistance, machine learning, and a lot of more algorithms around, and all of them rely on data. And for most of them, we also need a lot of data. And we actually have a lot of data available on the web. But to get this, we need a crawler that can gather this data automatically for us. Um, so let's look into the requirements that we had for our crawler. These requirements were, came from different research projects. And uh, the first was that this crawler has to work in a distributed uh, environment and it has to be scalable, especially because we assume that the data web will further grow in the future. The second requirement was that it has to show a respectful behavior with respect to other servers. So that means it should not overload servers with requesting a lot of information, but it also should make sure that it is not blocked because of unrespectful behavior. And at this point mainly um, means that it should abide to the robots exclusion standard protocol. The third requirement um, was that uh, also we are focusing on structured data and crawling this structured data. Uh, there are also web pages that offer their information in uh, a semi-structured format and this crawler should still be able to crawl this information. The fourth requirement was that its architecture should be fully extensible so that we can add more functionality in the future. And the fifth requirement was that it should uh, create metadata about its own crawling process so that it can be analyzed later on. This led to this design for our crawler squirrel. <coughs> it comprises two main components uh, the frontier on the left-hand side and the worker component on the right-hand side. And on the right you can already see that the scalability is mainly covered by um, being able to deploy several workers at once and they share the work by uh, working in parallel on different machines. Um, the Frontier has the task to control the complete working, uh, the complete crawling process and orchestrate the work and the worker are performing the actual crawling itself. The orange boxes that you can see here in this figure are the modules uh, of the single components and these modules are given to the components by dependency injection so that each of these components uh, each of these modules can be replaced in the future with different implementations. So let's look into the single components. The first is the frontier and to uh, understand the frontier we have a running example with these five URIs that you can see on the right. The first uh, module of the frontier is the normalizer and the normalizer transforms the given URIs into a normal form that mainly comprises to remove default ports, to decode unnecessary URL encoding, to remove fragments, what we very often see when we work with ontology files, and also to normalize these paths. And in addition, there can also be other um, rule, uh, rules defined by, uh, by the user, for example. The second module is the filter, and the filter ha has 
the task, the main task of the filter is to uh, remove your eyes that already have been crawled before. For uh, to allow this, uh, the filter is connected to a database that contains all these URIs. Um, in addition to that, the users can also define additional rules. For example, in a practice, it does not really make sense to crawl DBpedia uh, resources since you can easily download the DBpedia as a dump file, so you don't want to crawl all these single resources. And you may want to remove them from your list of your eyes. The maybe most important module of the Frontier is the queue, uh, because the queue decides which task is given next to the single workers, and so it has a huge influence of the strategy of the crawling process. In our current implementation, Scribble mainly follows a load balancing strategy. That means that it tries to crawl as many um, your eyes in parallel as possible, but without overloading a single server. To this end, our queue groups the your eyes based on the domain or based on their IP, so that a worker gets a set of your eyes and all these your eyes belong to the same domain, so that this worker can make sure that it always talks to the same server. The Worker is the component that carries out the actual crawling and it comprises a fetcher, which is the first step. The fetcher downloads the content of the given URI. And there we have different implementations. We have an HTTP client, an FTP client, a Sparkle client, but also a client for the CKN API. After downloading, the content is analyzed and there we also rely on different libraries like Apache Jenna, Apache Any23, uh, the, the Margo puzzle, but also um, uh, a module that allows the scraping of HTML pages based on rules defined by the users. The collector module collects a set of new URIs that is then sent back to the frontier for further crawling. And the thing takes care of storing the crawled data. We have two implementations at the moment. One is a Spark client that inserts the data into a triple store. The other one is a file-based sync. In addition to the data that is crawled, the worker also writes metadata about its own crawling process and this metadata mainly relies on the provenance ontology. So crawling a URI is actually an activity that you can see in the center here in this figure. And to this um, activity there are additional information attached um, about the crawling. Um, Now we come to the evaluation of our crawler and first we compared it to two existing crawlers. The first one is Apache Nudge, an open source project for a web crawler. This web crawler um, has an RDF plugin, but unfortunately this plugin is not maintained anymore. But we still have it here for comparison reasons. Uh, the second crawler for our comparison is LD Spider. It's actually a linked data crawler. It has two strategies, a breadth first strategy and a load balancing strategy. And um, although it is not able to um, be deployed in a distributed environment, it can sc still scale through adding more threads to it. And for our experiments, we used it with 1, 8, 16 or 32 threads. Uh, first, we compared the features of the single crawlers and uh, it can be seen that Scribble offers the most um, reading, the most uh, RDF serializations, compressions and uh, endpoint formats. 
Um, but I marked here the maybe most important features that Squirrel offers that are, for example, HDT, which might be more important in the future, uh, but is not covered at the moment by other crawlers. Um, we also offer these uh, HTML scraping where users can define rules to gather data from HTML web pages. And Squirrel also covers Sparkle endpoints and CCAN portals. In an experiment to measure the effectiveness of the crawlers, uh, of the working crawlers, which are Squirrel and LD Spider, we created a synthetic data web comprising 100 servers. 40 of them offered their data as dump files. 30 of them were Sparkle endpoints. 21 of them were dereferencing servers. 5% were CCAN portals and 4% were servers that offered HTML pages comprising RDFA data. And here we can see the results. The different instances of LD Spider with these different numbers of threads uh, could, couldn't uh, crawl more than 31% of all the data of this web. Uh, with the load balancing strategy, which is in the fifth line, it Uh, the crawler terminates too early and only crawls 3% of the available data. The different instances of Squirrel with different numbers of workers crawled 98% of the available data before terminating. In a second experiment, we measured the efficiency of the crawlers and for this we had again a synthetic data web with 200 servers and we only use dereferencing servers because they offer the feature that the crawler can negotiate the RDF serialization that is used to download the data so that we can ensure that all crawlers are able to crawl the complete web. And this also worked except for LD Spider with a load balancing strategy that ter again terminated too early. Um, from the crawlers that crawl the complete web, Squirrel with 18 workers was the fastest, but it came with a price, so it consumed a larger amount of um, memory than LD Spider, where the uh, smallest instance only consumed 1.2 gigabyte of RAM. So, Our conclusion from these experiments is that Squirrel achieved a higher effectiveness but and uh, also had the lowest runtime, but uh, LD Spider showed a better RAM efficiency. This mainly comes because uh, Squirrel is working in a distributed way uh, with Docker containers, and that means that each component comes with its own. JVM that has to be initialized and that needs actually more RAM than a single JVM that is used by LD Spider. But it's also part of our future work that we want to improve the efficiency of Squirrel further. So I want to summarize my talk with the statement that Squirrel is a distributed, scalable, extensible open source crawler for the web of data. Thanks for watching.